like a defender. Expected thunder on the plane to the Big 12 Conference as Oklahoma, Texas, Nebraska were winners. Top 10 Colorado stumbled. And the Rams upsetting the sixth team in the country. The Tennessee Volunteers and Florida State Seminoles were also winners. The new boss of the Florida Gators turned out a familiar scenario. And he'll go deep. 58 yards. And the Michigan Wolverines beat the Washington Huskies in the matchup of top 10 teams. Hits it. He is a hero. Kick on the way. Michigan win. Tonight, another Pac-10 team used to the hype light starts with high hopes. And a senior quarterback determined to grab the ring in the last go-round. Touchdown, USC! The opposition is no rubber tree. They come from the tough Southeastern Conference, which could use a little good news to start this new season. Yep, college football 2002 is here. And here are the University of Southern California Trojans massed at the tunnel to enter the Coliseum, one of the legendary sports stadiums in all the world. And so many great college football games have taken place here in this old citadel. The Coliseum was the centerpiece for two Summer Olympic Games, 1932-1984, but it's known most of all as the home of the Southern California Trojans since the UCLA Bruins, who used to share the place, moved over to the Rose Bowl in Pasadena. And welcome to ABC's College Football Weekend Bash, presented by AT&T Wireless, matching the Southern California Trojans of the Pac-10 against the visiting Auburn Tigers of the SEC. Hello again, and welcome to this continuing coverage of college football here on ABC Sports. Something we've been doing every year since 1966, and it has been our pleasure. And we'd like to welcome back an old friend who has found his way home after a couple of years wandering around, Dan Fouts, gunner from Oregon and a great one with the San Diego Chargers. Keith, no place I'd rather be than watching a ball game right next to you. Well, we've got ourselves a game today that's filled with unknowns. On the one hand, you got the Trojan sword, and over here you got the Auburn hammer. What do you think? Well, that sword is quarterback Carson Palmer. He's on the verge of becoming the statistical passing leader here at SC, but that's not how they judge quarterbacks here they judge him by winning and right now he's last chance for him to live up to all the hype and expectation last chance for Carson Palmer to lead the Trojans to where they expect to be at the end of the year and that's the Rose Bowl we don't want to suggest that Auburn can't throw it but we do know they can run it with the Carnell Williams their big tailback they call Carnell Cadillac because he's so smooth and powerful and while it's his moves that will wow you it's the way he finishes off the runs that reminds so many Auburn fans of those great Auburn tailbacks. Keith, when you come up to tackle Carnell Williams, you better be careful because the Cadillac will run you over. And they've got a bunch of long-legged, lanky freshmen that are going to be playing at wideout. Nobody knows what a freshman's going to do until he has done it. But we think this could be a very entertaining college football game. It is the end of the lazy, hazy days of summer and the happy, carefree times that we always enjoyed this time of year are not quite the same as they used to be. is punctuated by the mighty strikes of the Lamore Naval Station here in California in that force of a Tiger and a Trojan. Now let's go to the stadium floor. Welcome back Todd Harris who is with USC coach Pete Carroll. All right, thank you, Keith. Coach, the last time USC finished in the top 10 was in 1989. Does this team have the ability, and are they ready to get back there? Well, we're going to find out. we got a heck of a schedule and a great opponent here in our opener. We're going to find out what kind of, time, what kind of team we are, and uh, we're, we're still shooting for that kind of prominence. You're a defensive-minded coach, a lot of history in the NFL. You've seen a lot of great safeties. How does number 43, Troy Polamalu, rate? Troy's one of the best players I've ever coached, and, and that's, that takes in a lot, of, a lot of great football players. I hope he gets off to a great start. He's really something special. Thanks for your time. Good luck, Coach. All right, see you. Pete Carroll is in his second season at USC. 
USC. Tommy Tuberville, that's uh, Troy Polamalu, the man they were talking about. Tommy Tuberville is starting his fourth year at Auburn. He's 21 and 15. He won the Western Division of that conference in 2000 and co-champs last year while he beat Florida. Two successive bowl games and he came over to Auburn from Ole Miss. This has been one of the coolest summers in Southern California history, but when Auburn arrived last Saturday, so did the 100 degree temperatures. But like they say, it's low humidity, right? Right. The officials are Pac-10. The referee is Gordon Reese, and we're ready to play a football game at the Coliseum in Los Angeles. Ryan Killeen brought to USC simply for this purpose, kicking off. And the Auburn receiver goes back to the one-yard line and then back into the end zone. Roderick Hood, and Hood is having trouble finding anywhere to run as he gets up around the 10 and moves it maybe to the 14-15 yard line. So the kickoff worked from Killeen, and uh, he's got him pinned deep as uh, Daniel Cobb comes out, the senior quarterback. He had a battle this fall with Jason Campbell to win the start. Big guy, 6'4", 224, some of the numbers on him. He has overcome a lot of physical problems in order to get to this point. He has a new offensive coordinator this year, Bobby Petrino, and he's very, very comfortable, he says. So here's the first play of the ball game for Auburn. Ball is handed off. It is handed off to Carnell Williams, who found daylight, broke the play over the left side, and runs it all the way out near the 40-yard line. Now the Alamo Rent-A-Car starting lineups for the Tigers as they pick up a big gain. The guy they call Cadillac just carried it. Williams of 2-pound uh, tailback. They've got big, fast wideouts and big tight ends. The offensive fronts, the tackles are both bigger than 300 pounds. Center and guard are in the 290s. They're big enough, but they do need a little time, perhaps, to meld. Crittenden goes at about 336. First down for Auburn, getting a big play. The ball is resting out at the 32-yard uh, line is where they mark it, where he hit the chalk. They go back to the same ball carrier, Williams, and uh, he's across the 35 to the 36, picking up four. The USC defense, pretty solid group here. Cody had 39 tackles last year as a freshman. Udaisy, 35. The linebacking bunch, solid. Senior in the middle of that group, Pollard, and this is a very good, solid group though not the biggest in the world. The Trojans hurting some in the secondary. Kevin Arbett lost at cornerback, broken foot. Polamalu, you know about. Some of the Auburn fellows couldn't pronounce his name, but they'll know him before it's over. Cobb back, looking, nobody to throw to. Takes off, big guy, not afraid to run. Fumble! And the Southern California Trojans jump on it at the Auburn 41-yard line. So the Tigers turn it over as Cobb took off, had a good gain out of it, but when he went down, the ball came out. Deshaun Hill, number five, is going to be in on this play. Great move there by Cobb, and now he's got to cover up, but that ball is knocked out of there by Hill. You saw that right arm go in there, rather middle linebacker. Mike Pollard, number 45, watch his shoulder and watch the elbow right on the ball, and that will pop it loose before Cobb is down. And the Trojans come to the attack, having made a break for themselves at the Auburn 41-yard line. Palmer turns and fakes it, rolls it back, wants to throw, goes underneath, throws in the slot. Pass is caught by Malafo McKenzie coming out of the backfield, and he'll take it down to the 26-yard line. Gain of 15 yards on the play. The senior Carson Palmer at quarterback for the Trojans, the three-year starter. Given health, he will be the most prolific quarterback in USC history, and that's a pretty fancy fact. He's already been invited to play in the East-West Shrine game. Malifo McKenzie was tackled by his own tight end that time, Keith. Alex Holmes brought him down. Sultan McCullough has come into the ball game. He got the pony backfield. Carson Palmer stands up, throws quickly, completes it to Mike Williams. Mike Williams is a 6'5", 210-pound freshman from Tampa, Florida. Now the Alamo starting lineup for the Trojans, the backs and receivers. Tailback starter is McKenzie. He had the most practice time. McCullough will play along with him, as you just saw. Justin Fargus will not play tonight. He has a bad hamstring. They're saving him for the regular season. Can't be a tailback university, however, without a big guy like this to open the door for you. This is a key unit, a change up front for the Trojans. Uh, Fred Mat uh, Matus is hurt, and uh, Derek Graff gets the start. As they run the football with McCullough, Sultan McCullough, who 
one of the fastest people in the state of California when he came to school here, coming out of high school in Pasadena. He's a 190-pounder, and he is really quick. There's Sultan McCullough, who's the tailback on that play, along with Malifo McKenzie. So SC likes to determine, call this their uh, pony backfield. And they want to use McCullough and McKenzie and use McKenzie as a receiver as we saw on the first play. 14-yard line now. Another first down for Southern California. They hand the ball off on the inside. It'll go back to McKenzie. And McKenzie will be used. He's a good receiver. He'll go into a slot. He'll do a lot of different things. The Auburn defensive front, they return seven starters on defense. Jay Ratliff moves from offense to defense. The linebackers, very good crew here. Brown in the middle. He's the rock. Dansby and Thomas fly around all over the place. And the secondary, the safeties, Robinson and Rose Green, played corner last year. And it figures the Trojans will test them deep. And probably soon. There's Dontarius Thomas right there. And he's had 122 tackles a year ago. Here they go inside. The pass is caught. Touchdown, USC. Kareem Kelly. Graham Kelly in the slot right here on the read by the quarterback, the blitz by the linebacker, Dansby, and Palmer was all over that, got the slant, and then an outstanding effort by Kelly to slice into the end zone. And once Dansby vacated, uh, Kelly had a pretty easy route, didn't he? He sure did. Here's the try for point by David Davis, and it is good. And so the Southern California Trojans at 12.05 to go in the first quarter of play, go 41 yards, five plays, cash in a turnover and lead seven to nothing. Alabama faces Oklahoma Saturday, 3.30 Eastern on ABC. The Trojans needed a minute and 56 seconds. They used the pass more than the run on that play, but it was Cobb's fumble that gave the Trojans the opportunity, and here is the touchdown as Kareem Kelly comes off the slot position, breaks the tackle, and goes into the end zone, and it's 7-0 Southern California. Breaks the tackle of Mark Brown, the middle linebacker, and strong safety junior Rosegreen. A couple of tough tacklers. Kelly made it look easy. All right, here's uh, Ryan Killeen kicking off. He's out of Norco, California. Roderick Hood is the deep man for the Auburn Tigers, a yard deep in the end zone, and he's coming. Shakes away from the first man. Got good speed across the 20, out to about the 23-yard line before uh, Daryl Rideau grabs him by the britches and pulls him out of bounds. And our Burger King game solutions, Keith, Auburn thinks they can rush for 170 yards or more. In fact, the running back coach, Eddie Grant, thinks that 200 is attainable. Their inexperienced wide receivers must win the battle against the inexperience of the SC cornerbacks, and they're going to try and find out Cal Carson Palmer's weaknesses. Well, they know one thing. If they blitz them with a linebacker like that and they don't cover better in the secondary, Palmer will find that wide-open receiver. Auburn comes to the attack now, and they send three true freshmen onto the field, and the referee, Gordon Reese, stops the play for a moment here. Wanted to talk to Walt Wolf. The umpire. Full start, offense. Five yards to the previous spot. Still first down. So the Tigers having a little trouble getting untracked here. A long way from home to open the season. They're playing five games in the month of September. That's a lot. Oroma Shadu is in there as a wide out. So is Abamanu and uh, Anthony Mix. He's six foot five, 234 pounds. That's pretty good size for a wide out. So Bobby Petrino, the new offensive coordinator, sending a different look out on the field for this second series. Dan uh, Cobb turns around, keeps the ball, rolls it out, gets a block, gets up to the 20, and he's knocked down a couple of yards short of the uh, line of scrimmage as Troy Polamalu comes over and locks his legs. Great tackle by Polamalu because he was being blocked by tight end Robert Johnson. Cobb pointed, pointed out to... Here's Polamalu right here. And there's Johnson, number 87, coming out. Now watch Cobb point to Johnson. Hey, block number 43 right here. Well, Polamalu's just too quick and too accurate with the tackle. So a missed tackle, a missed block results in a tackle and a two-yard loss. And back goes Cobb. Pumps it, throws it, and it is incomplete. 
The pass was intended for Oba Manu. It was in traffic and uh, pretty easy to distract the young teenage freshman at that particular point when he is surrounded by people trying to take his head off. This is a ta an attack style of defense that Pete Carroll has. The key is Troy Polamalu. The All-American last year, bidding to become another one of the SC great strong safeties. And his ability to play different positions is key. They stay with the same alignment. Three true freshmen in there as wideouts. Shotgun formation now as Cobb drops back. He's 6'4". He can see over the stack. Ball thrown hard down the middle past the 30-yard line and very close to a first down and caught by Obamanu. But I think he's a yard short of his first down. Well, Obamanu is a freshman, a true freshman, and that's a true freshman, true mistake, not getting enough yardage with the hook route over the middle. He pushes Rideau deep, crosses over the middle, and it's going to come up about a yard short. So they're going to have to go for it here. Oh, is this a risk? Guess who's going to get the ball? Probably number 24, the Cadillac. If he doesn't, I'll fall out of a chair. Trojans almost jump. I think the idea perhaps is to try to get him to jump, and they don't do it. And now Cobb comes off the center snap and calls a timeout. So they were just trying to tease the Trojans into jumping offside, but they couldn't get it. And the time is out with the Trojans leading 7 to nothing. The Auburn Tigers will go to the punt right here, and that can be a considered risk against USC. Especially number 43, Troy Polamalu, has got four blocks. And whether he comes close or whether he blocks one, the key thing is here is to put pressure on the center. Also, Damon Duvall is a three-step punter who has been known to bobble a snap or two. Kareem Kelly is waiting for it. Duvall is way back there. He's got a lot of room. But he uses a lot of it in taking three steps. No pressure on him, and it's a beauty. Oh, my goodness, it's a beauty. Kelly backs up, and the ball goes into the end zone on one bounce. Now, he kicked that ball inside his own 20-yard line, officially at 69 yards. He chased the pigeons away with that one. <laughs> he sure did. ABC Sports presentation of college football is brought to you by Keystone Light. Always smooth. Parties happen. Nivea for men. Aftershave balm. More evolved skin care. Chevy. The cars you can depend on, the cars that last, will be there. And AT&T, welcome to M-Life, AT&T Wireless. From the 20-yard line, USC ball. They lead 7 to nothing first quarter. Hand the ball off to Sultan McCullough. And the Tigers react to him and bring him down. He might have a yard on it, might have less than that. Take a look at our Burger King game solutions. SC must stay healthy. Way too many injuries to their running backs last year. They want to attack the new safeties for Auburn. Both Robinson and Rose Green are former corners. And they want to give that Cadillac a flat tire. Cadillac had a great start with a 17-yard rush on his first carry. But they never went back to him in the last series. Grant Mattos has come in at a receiver position for USC. He is a possession receiver. He's a good one. Single back. Palmer hands the ball off. And good movement in traffic by McCullough. We'll get him across the 25 to the 26. McCullough's got more speed than anybody that's ever played here at USC. But what he hasn't had in the past is the ability we just saw right there. Make that first tackler miss with a nice move. And endure. Endurance is so important in your running backs. But the linebackers these days are they're like buckshot coming out of a 10 gauge, you know. You, they're <laughs> going to get a piece of you sooner or later. They got three guys with shotguns over there against them today. That's Kelly in motion. Palmer, a little bit of movement. Lefty gets the pass away, and it is intercepted by Carlos Densby. The pressure came from Carlos Rogers. The pass was away, and that was a linebacker that intercepted that ball, folks. Once Kelly went in motion, that allowed Carlos Rogers, number 14, a free shot on the quarterback. Watch. You see Kelly top of the screen. Well, that was Rogers' man. Now his man is number three, and he hits him 
perfectly. And how about this interception? The hit by the corner, and now the interception by the linebacker. And Auburn owns the football first down at the Southern California 23-yard line. Dansby is a big guy, 6'4", about 230. But boy, is he quick. Cobb, single back, Williams, changing the play. Gives it to Carnell Williams. Got a crack. He's a load. He's gone. Touchdown, Auburn. Lorenzo Diamond tied in, gave him some help to shake it free. But this guy can really move it in traffic. 23 yards on the carry. A lot of tailbacks use a lot of moves and jump outside. But what we saw with the Cadillac that time, all those moves were designed for one thing to get him in the end zone as quickly as possible. I think Tuberville got word to Petrino that, hey, we didn't give him the ball that last series. Let's give him the ball. Each team is now turned to turnover into a touchdown as Auburn tries for the point. Duvall, good. He hit a 62-yarder out here warming up with some wind at his back. Auburn came into town on Saturday. It is cooler tonight at the Coliseum than one might have imagined after a 100-degree day. Single back is Williams, number 24, and as he hits this left side, the blocking is excellent, but he sets up his blocks well. And now the bounces off one or two, and the sharp cuts, the slashing style of Carnell Williams gets him six. Check it out in real speed just how fast these moves are. Not only the moves, but the power. So we're all even at 7-7 seven and seven here in the first quarter of play with eight and a half minutes to go. Auburn will kick it away now from the 35-yard line, and uh, Williams is having a chat. Scoring drive, only one play for 23 yards. But that whole thing was set up by pressure and the great play by Dansby for the interception. McCullough and Herschel Dennis, a pair of running backs. Dennis is a freshman tailback out of uh, Long Beach Poly. They think he is going to be special. It's a low bouncing kick picked up back there on the four yard line by McCullough. Looks for a crack. Coming up field uh, finds enough to get him out to about the 24 yard line. Here's some of the happenings. Duke ending its the losing streak. Happy times in Durham. Colorado was upset again by Colorado State. They don't have too much luck in opening games. Michigan beats Washington in what uh, Rick Neuheisel calls one of the great brain camp, uh, cr uh, cramps of the season, uh, if not the decade. And uh, Tyrone Willingham got his first coaching win at Notre Dame against Maryland. First down from the 24-yard line. Pass is thrown a little bit behind the receiver, but it's still good for the first down. That's Mike Williams. He's 6'5", 210, freshman out of Tampa, Florida. He's a big, strong youngster and very settled for one so young. He just tucked the ball away and muscled his way for the first down. And he was battling a left ankle injury earlier this week. Looks totally healthy now. He's going to be a big part of this pass offense as he will alternate with Kareem Kelly. Kelly in the game now. And the ball sits at the 32-yard line where it's a first down. Palmer throwing, gets it outside. It goes to uh, Brendan Hancock, who has come into the ball game as the fullback. Hancock is another freshman out of Fresno, and he is out close to the 40-yard line. There's the uh, top 25 coaches poll of uh, after the happenings, except for this game, all the other games being complete. Virginia Tech had a pretty good sized win over LSU. And USC jumps all the way from 19 to 16, leaping right over their next opponent, Colorado. Palmer turns and gives the ball away to Malapo McKenzie, and it's McKenzie being hemmed in as he tried to find some slant room and get out across the 45-yard line, but nothing doing. The pursuit by the Auburn defense, very good. Always has been. I can never remember Auburn not playing pretty good defense. They really have a good set of linebackers in, in Dansby, Thomas, and Brown. We've already seen Dansby's athletic ability with that interception. That time, Thomas came over and delivered the big hit. 
They've got a couple of corners who are playing safety too. But uh, so far, SC has not tested them. On third down, Palmer's pass is dropped off underneath. It is McKenzie with a convoy, but he's close to his first down. It just depends on the mark, and it looks like they're marking him at the 46. He needed to go to the 47. It's Carlos Densby making the tackle again for Auburn. This is as good a group of linebackers as SC will probably see all year. Their speed and athleticism is what uh, kept McKenzie from picking up that first down. And Tom Malone comes in to do the punting. He is a true freshman from Lake Elsinore, California. This will be his first collegiate punt. And he replaces Mike McGillivray, who left after four years of punting here at Southern California. So Tom Malone is in to hit it. And the man waiting for it is Roderick Hood. Malone did not get all of it, but it's a tail dragger, and it won't go down the field. It goes sideways and goes out of bounds. So Auburn gets a break there. That ball it drags its tail. It goes all the way down inside the 10, but it's out at the 22, uh, 32, excuse me, first down. 32 yards. This is ABC's College Football Holiday Weekend Bash, presented by AT&T Wireless. At a tie ball game at 5.56 to go in the first quarter of play at the Los Angeles Coliseum. And the Auburn Tigers will go to work after a 32-yard punt that went out of bounds on the Auburn 22-yard line. Daniel Cobb has Ronnie Brown set behind him. And Cobb stands up, puts it in the air, and it is incomplete. The man was completely covered. The ball was intended for Silas Daniel. He was the only man on that side of the field. And Roy, Ron Nunn, who has come here from San Mateo, California, came as a, out of City College, handled him well. And Nunn, he does a good job here, but this is a poorly thrown ball. It's too low. Tough adjustment for... Silas Daniels trying to dive for that ball. On that fade route, you want that ball up in the air over the outside shoulder. Could have looked the other way. He had a couple of men on this side of the field. From the 22, second down and 10. They'll run it this time with Ronnie Brown. And Brown, who's in at 217 pounds, a sophomore from Cartersville, Georgia, will get out to about the 26. Bobby oh. Petrino told me beat before the game that the only time that Carnell Williams will not be in the game is when he needs a blow, when he's tired. Well, he's got 44 yards and just three carries. So we're seeing Ronnie Brown now giving him a, that blow. Chris Butler is another tailback, listed number two. He's the one who came from Nebraska. And Trey Smith is another freshman out of Venice, Florida. They like him a lot. Third down and six. And Cobb, with time, throws high down the middle of the pass is incomplete. He had his man wide open. Marcel Willis was wide open, and the ball just sailed away on Cobb's throw, and Auburn will have to punt. Yeah, the 24-year-old, six-year senior, with not a whole lot of experience, got happy feet that time. The pressure forced him to move around in the pocket. Man-to-man -man coverage in the secondary, and he overthrew a wide-open receiver. Duval punting and Kelly waiting for USC. Duval's first punt, remember, was a 69-yarder. He didn't get all of this one. And it, too, like the Trojan punt, goes straight sideways and goes out of bounds at about the 35-yard line. Tommy Tuberville yesterday in conversation had this comment about this linebacking group that we've been talking about. We have real good linebackers. And one year at Miami, I had Jesse Armstead, Darren Smith, Michael Barra, and Ray Lewis, uh, Rohan Marley. And I compare these linebackers to those guys. And folks, that's pretty fancy company. Yeah, you know, Keith, they're, they're intelligent players. They've got experience. And then you put them in these athletic bodies, 6'4", 240, and they run. That's why they're so highly thought of by Tuberville. Palmer rolls out. Gets his pass away to the sidelines. And Mike Williams has the ball ricochet away. You almost wonder if the sun was in his eyes as it starts to set over the top of the stadium. But that ball hit him right in the shoulder. Go back to the huddle. The quarterback said, heck, you could have caught that with your eyes closed. Next time, I'll hit you right in the mask with it. <laughs> it's a fine throw by Palmer on the run. Cornerback slips down and... Receiver wide open, Mike Williams just with a flat drop. 
McKenzie and McCullough in the backfield as McKenzie goes in motion and he's now wide out and gets the ball quickly and they get it to him and they've got their first down and McKenzie takes it across midfield all the way down to the Auburn 44 yard line nice play by Lafu McKenzie total bust by the Auburn defense nobody went with McKenzie when he went in motion until it was too late junior Rose Green tried to go out and pick him up but watch Kerry Colbert will come down, number 83, and he's going to pick to the inside here. Two men go on the inside. Nobody goes out to McKenzie. Huge play for the Trojans. you got that old craftsman sitting up here calling the plays for Southern California, Norm Chow. It's all about mismatches. You move people around, put your athletes out in space, and let them play. That's McKenzie again coming in motion, this time for the right side. Palmer goes down the middle with it. Too high. Kerry Colbert. And when you talk to Palmer about receivers, this is the fellow he talks about. Kerry Colbert. He had him. He was in front of the defender. And Palmer threw it too high. Just a case of rushing your throw. He made a good read. It's at the top of the screen, far side of the field. Mike Williams was double covered. Palmer saw that. He whips around and just throws this ball too high for Colbert. Or that might have been a touchdown for SC. They tried the left side of the line, and there's not much there. McCullough brought down by DeMarco McNeil. Norm Chow, like most offensive coordinators, will tell you that we want to establish the run and then go from there. It's curious to hear him and Pete Carroll talk about their quarterback in Carson Palmer. Here is Norm right here. You know, they want to take pressure off him. Well, the way they take pressure off him to establish a strong running game. Throws again high, and it is incomplete. And the Trojans will have to punt it. That was Greg a case Gunther of, was the intended receiver. I think that was a case of Carson being too close to the line of scrimmage and then overthrowing a guy in the tight end right here over the middle. Greg Gunther, who is 6'8". But again, Carlos Rogers at 6'1 came up and forced this high throw over the top. Punch away. This will go deep into the end zone, beyond the field of play. Come out to the 20-yard line. Very little angle on the kick. He just killed it. And it, it'll be Auburn's ball first down at the 20. The battle for the Indy Racing Championship has tightened up dramatically. Just one point separating teammates Jill DeFerrin and Helio Castroneves. The uh, race, points race Sunday will come down to the Chicagoland Speedway for the Delphi Indy 300. That'll be live at 1 Eastern, 10 Pacific time on ABC Sports. Auburn from the 20, and Carnell Williams is back in there at tailback, and he's got the ball. They get a piece of him in the backfield, slow him down, and uh, take him down at the 20-yard line. It was Omar Nazel that grabbed him by the arm, and here's Todd Harris. Andy Fletcher from the University of Southern California is out of the game right now, and they're checking him for a possible concussion. Probably won't know more until halftime. Thank you, Todd. Second down and 10 from the 20. Williams again on a good fake, carries out the fake, gives Cobb time, finds a receiver. First down, Auburn up at the 37, 38 yard line. Robert Johnson, the tight end. Now he's another big one, 6'6", 270 pounds. All these tight ends look like tackles. Yeah, well, this part of it doesn't, Keith, because he's going to jump right over the top of number 43, Troy Palomalo. This is a great fake by both Williams and Cobb. Good hand fake there. Watch this move by a guy, as you said, 6'6", 270. So put the ball at the 38-yard line, first down, and a 7-7 ball game, first quarter of play. Look at that kid running traffic. I mean, he is so tough. 
Yeah, he just bounced the middle linebacker, Mike Pollard, right on his wallet, too. Deshaun Hill and Polamalu finally bring him down. Pollard came over and squared up in the hole, and Carnell Williams dropped his shoulder. You don't knock many middle linebackers backwards, but Williams did that time. Well, he broke a collarbone uh, last year with that kind of uh, unwillingness to yield. So sometimes you can be overly aggressive, but this has uh, got the beginnings of being a terrific college running back. Look at him. The one that I saw last year, I thought that ran with this kind of quickness in traffic was Portis, the running back from Miami. He was like that. But yeah. He didn't have the power, I don't think, that this fella has. I played with James Brooks in San Diego for a couple of years, a great Auburn running back. This is what JB did so well as he attacked the tackler. And again, that's not any old tackler. That's Troy Palomalo, and he's sitting on his wallet. <laughs> Ball is on the 45-yard line now, and it is third down and three. They're throwing, and it's caught, and it's on the chalk for the first down. Silas Daniels, and the penalty flag is down. He's out of bounds at about the 49-yard line. Let's see about the flag. It's going to be a personal foul against SC. Late hit. The whistle blew because the receiver is clearly out of bounds. Sometimes these linebackers don't hear that whistle when they're running full speed. The rest of the officials, umpire is Walt Wolf. Uh, Fred Jim Rennie is the headline. Personal foul. Defense, 15 yards from the end of the run. Gordon oh, Reese, the referee. Down. And Matt Gilchrist, field judge. Larry Farina, side judge. And back judge, Gary LaForge. Silas Daniels is trying to stay in bounds after this catch. That left foot will step out of bounds. And there's the late hit by Pollard. It was really late. But you know, a middle linebacker, he, he ran about 50 yards to, to get that lick, so he wasn't going to pull off. Puts the ball down on the Southern California 36-yard line with a minute and two seconds to go in the first quarter of play. Auburn getting in position to put some points on the scoreboard, break this tie as Cobb comes back. And throws down the middle. Ball is caught by Silas Daniels. First down, Auburn, Southern California, 18-yard line. That was a heck of a catch by Silas Daniels because Pollard flashed right in front of him. It looked like Pollard might have even got a fingertip on that ball to change its flight. Pollard knows he should have picked this one off, but watch this ball. He did get a hand on it. What a catch by Daniels. Sophomore out of Jacksonville, Florida. So here's Auburn on the move. First down, Trojan. 19 say. Close to that's close to the 18. That's where the official score will put it. Ball is handed off to number 24. That's Darnell Williams. And over the left side, didn't find much daylight that time. Pollard's there, and so is uh, Omar Nazel. Talked about how Williams broke his collarbone against the tide. Well, it's what he did before that. And tonight is off to a great start. Over 50 yards in just seven carries. But this is where he becomes so dangerous. They can fake the ball to Williams and run these bootlegs. And the first quarter time is gone. It's a 7-7 tie after one. ABC Sports presentation of college football returns after this message and the word from our ABC station. Give me a minute. Introducing PCS Vision from Sprint. Clearly, a whole new way to look at wireless. Here's Auburn as we go to the second quarter of play, sitting second down and 10 at the Southern California 18-yard line. The score is 7-7. Trojans cast in a turnover to score first. Auburn came back with a great interception and made a touchdown out of that one. Now, this is the first sustained drive by either team, really, that we've had in the ball game. But sustained only to the 18-yard line. Williams is back in the backfield. Cobb is in the shotgun with Williams. They're throwing. They throw it. And Williams intercepted. Oh, what a bad pass. 
Phillips. He threw it right to Omar Nezel, who was between him and Carnell Williams. He didn't put any air under the ball, and they turned it over for a second time. I'm not sure if Nezel was on a zone pass drop or just reading the fact that Williams was swinging out of the backfield. This is a heck of a play by Omar Nezel. Not only did he read it correctly, he executed the interception perfectly. Here's Nazel right here. The swing pass comes out to the outside here. And watch Nazel just fall off. Poor decision. Even if that ball is completed to Williams, there were Trojans all over the place. Sometimes as a quarterback, you make up your mind, especially when you got such a weapon as the Cadillac. And so the Trojans dodge a bullet. They bring it out to the 40-yard line for a first down. Palmer looking deep, goes underneath, and throws it very hard, and it bounces off of Kerry Colbert. <laughs> Colbert knew he had some room to run, too. It was a short route, only about four or five yards down the field, but that ball had some steam on it. He looked deep, though, and I think that's really the first time that uh, Palmer's had an idea going down, but he didn't do it. You would expect this type of turnaround from a Pete Carroll who is a defensive minded head coach this is a well coached football team the USC Trojans as Colbert moving a little bit Auburn showing blitz and they come hard and they make the play and no they don't either it is Mike Williams making the catch as Palmer with a beautiful fake and uh, Malifu McKenzie threw a heck of a block to keep the play alive and uh, two Tigers hit the uh, the would-be carrier and took him down in the meantime Palmer's working for 25 yards this is why Malifo McKenzie is the starting back watch him pick up Junior Rosegreen number four with an outstanding crushing pass block whoa wacko right on the numbers and then Palmer very calmly knew he had extra time delivered a good pass to Williams and it's another first down for USC at the Auburn 35-yard line. Now the Trojans are threatening. Carson Palmer looks deep, goes to the end zone. Incomplete. Intended for Kerry Colbert. Ball was thrown out of bounds. So Mark Brown came in and uh, smacked Carson Palmer as the ball went away. There is, uh, this is going to be the long pass. Roderick Hood with good coverage there on the double move. Ball thrown too far, but it's because of the pressure by Mark Brown. Great effort here Colbert by almost, Colbert. He almost caught that. Right on the chalk when the ball came down. So it's second down and ten. That's McKenzie in motion. He's got the ball. Can't turn the corner. Pursuit, very good. Hood and Brown. Mark Brown, the middle backer for the Auburn Tigers. He's not the most active of the three linebackers, but he covers a pretty good chunk of real estate himself. Back-to-back so -back good plays by Brown. Pressure on the quarterback on the previous play. And I don't think SC is going to make a lot of money trying to go wide against the speed of these Auburn linebackers tonight. Well, there's one thing that seems to always characterize the defense of Southeastern Conference football teams, and it's speed. Palmer passes away. Got a man. Ball is caught, but it's going to be short of the first down. Kareem Kelly came back to get to the ball, and he, when he came back, he was a yard or so short of the first down marker. Carlos Rogers, pretty good play there for Auburn. Here they are hooked up on the outside, and Kelly is going to push down. And right now, if the ball is thrown on time, he's got the first down, but he's got to come back to it to prevent the interception, and that also prevented the first down. Solid tackle by Rogers. Fourth and one. Where's Sam Cunningham? <laughs> On the sidelines in civilian clothes. Fourth down and one. Trojans are going, and McKenzie is in the backfield with Carson Palmer. Palmer's going to throw. Throws to the left side. Pass is caught by Grant Maddows. And Maddows is out of bounds inside the 15. First down, USC. Rose Green knocked him out of bounds. One of those bunch routes where you put three receivers 
in a small area and you run basically pick plays. There you see Matos running off the route of Mike Williams on the inside and Auburn just did not respond in time. Here they are, the bunch route right here and Rose Green is too late to come out to the outside. Confusion in the Auburn secondary. So on the fourth down play, pays off for the first down and here the Trojans threatening. They turn and give the ball to Sultan McCullough and McCullough's inside the five yard line, running with power getting a great block from Jacob Rogers to get him to that point. And with SC alternating between McCullough and McKenzie, they are both fresh and they're both being very productive here in the first half. You will not see Justin Fargus tonight. He has uh, still having trouble with that the hamstring and you see that uh, USC did not run the ball well last year, averaging just about 88 yards per game. Can't win in the fact then doing that. Or anywhere else, no. Second down, ball inside the five. It's McCullough touchdown. So the offensive front showed some authority as Kentnick and Graff opened up the middle of the line and McCullough slanted in. We really got to give some credit to that offensive line. They're an experienced group but not necessarily one that has a lot of stars on it. They're pass blocking well, and that run for a touchdown was a walk-in by McCullough. 12-04 to play in the first half. Here's the fourth try by Davis. It's good. So the Trojans convert another Auburn turnover into a touchdown. Both TDs have come off turnovers, and USC leads 14-7. It's a 14-7 ball game at 12.04 to go in the first half. Southern California leading Auburn. Omar Nezel had the key play in that last possession, intercepting that short pass of Daniel Cobb to stave off the Tigers' drive and give the Trojans some fuel. Ryan Killeen. Will kick it for USC. Got a big foot. Knocks it down to Roderick Hood. There's a little breeze coming from that direction. The ball's taken on the four-yard line by Hood. And Hood will hit the chalks at about the 23-24-yard line. Well, a couple of turnovers for our Pacific Life game summary. The interception by Carlos Dansby led to this 23-yard beauty by Carnell Cadillac Williams. That tied the score at seven. And then Omar Nezel with a gift leads to this three-yard plunge by Sultan McCullough, 14-7 Trojans. Ball is on the 23, first down for Auburn. Cobb starting and staying at quarterback, won the job, and he'll stay there. They're using a lot of fresh people, though. It's quite warm. Ball is taken by Carnell Williams, and he bounces outside to miss the first tackle, second tackle, and... Up he comes to close to the 40-yard line, and it'll be an Auburn first down. And this is what his quarterback, Daniel Cobb, says about this big running back. I'm really impressed with the way he runs the ball as far as his emotions and, and his effort and his heart. And I think that rubs off on his offensive linemen. When they see him battling for the extra two or three yards after two guys hit him, uh, I just kind of think it lifts their, lifts their spirits and makes them want to go out block even harder. First down at the 39-yard line for the Tigers. And Cobb's pass is down the sideline. Got a man out there. Pass is caught by Devin Aromashadu. Aromashadu from Miami Springs, Florida, just simply outran the defender, and the pass was right on the money. Best pass of the game for Daniel Cobb. Of course, with the play-action fake, the fake to Williams on the draw gave him time to throw. He could really step into this throw, and he puts it right on the money. Aroma Shudu is behind the defensive back there for SC, and Auburn strikes right back. Ronald Nunn was the man he outran, though Ronald did get him finally and uh, kept him from scoring. The ball is... Uh, at the 18-yard line, first down for the Tigers. They're in the shotgun. Cobb gives the ball to Williams. Williams turns back into the middle. 
And it, uh, I mean, you better get a hold of his handle because you're just not going to arm tackle it. He should have been down around the line of scrimmage and he wound up picking up about three yards. Now time for the Aflac trivia question and the question this week, which of these two schools had the most recent All-American running back? And who was it? All right, there's a lot of great choices in that question. SC and Auburn, man. Second down, call it eight, short eight. Cobb's still got it. Throws it. Throws it very hard, and a tight end, Cooper Wallace, could not reel it in. And I think, you know, I think that, that suggestion of the sun being a problem, when you look back into it, might have been involved in that. Yeah, and the uh, shadows are extremely long. The shadows are starting to creep over the top here and stretch out over the field, but they're in perfect alignment. If you look at these, the receiver coming across here is looking right down into that sun, and that was another high hard one from a quarterback. They're down and eight. Pitch it to Williams. They were lined up strong right. Carnell Williams goes inside the 10. And he's close to the 8-yard line. You almost pick your poison when you try to tackle this young man. Because if you are there in good position, he'll either bounce you on, on your back or he'll make a move and embarrass you. Third and eight, and the choice of the play is to go wide and let Carnell Williams run over SC tacklers. They were lined up strong right, and uh, that's where he went. And he is one yard short of the first down. So Auburn on fourth and one is going. USC leading 14 to 7. Williams slipping. He slipped as he dove into the line. Now just a question of the mark. He didn't have to get all the way to the eight. He was slipping, but he never lost his balance, Keith. I think oh. he got close enough obviously for the measurement but I think he got the first down here there's the slip but there's the dive Melvin Simmons covers him up this is a very firm turf they're playing on real grass it's been hot and dry around these parts he did not get it oh he did he did not get the first down. The ball was placed on the nine-yard line exactly, and Pete Carroll's the happiest guy in town right now. Anytime the defense can make a play like that. But Especially he, against a back like yep. that, Keith. But that yep. slip obviously cost him. Yeah, he didn't have full power. He was trying to bounce to the left, get outside just a bit. And that slip cost him his, his power. So the Trojans again dodge a bullet as Auburn's turned away downfield. And USC first down from its own nine-yard line. Colbert's the man in motion. Carson Palmer rolling out. Gets his pass away. Pass is thrown to the sideline to Kareem Kelly. It is short of a first down, but it's good movement of the ball. Carson Palmer's having a great first half, too. The, the play selection is allowing him to use his mobility. A lot of rollouts, a lot of bootlegs. And you can see a lot of production. The one interception uh, that shows there was a spectacular play by Carlos Dansby. Second down and one for USC. It's McKenzie. And he's got the first down. Rod Roderick Hood makes the tackle for Auburn. There have been a lot of running backs around this uh, campus in Southern California. There's Mike Garrett, who's now the athletic director, O.J. Simpson, of course, and Anthony Davis, Charles White, Marcus Allen, Ricky Bell, so many of them. Known as tailback you, but it hasn't been that lately. Here's the pitch to McKenzie. 
McKenzie in his sixth year, like Daniel Cobb, would turn it up to about the 25-yard line. That's a pickup of close to three. And anybody, any of those great running backs will tell you that uh, it starts with that offensive line. SC has had a lot of great offensive linemen. Talk about great running backs. How about these guys, Keith? Well, there was Tucker Fredrickson and Joe Cribb. Then the fellow you know so well, James Brooks, who played for the Chargers. Bo Jackson and Brent Fullwood. And then a lot. And this fellow Williams is going to be right in company with these guys by the time he's done. That's a cutback coming back inside for McKenzie. He's at 225 pounds, a junior. He had a rough year last year, a lot of trouble, a lot of injuries. Lost his dad, all kinds of things. And uh, now he's back. The NCAA gave him the sixth year, and now he's back to have his senior season. And he's so vital to this offense because of his versatility. He can line up as a wide receiver in the slot, play the tailback position. We've seen how well he pass blocks, too. McKenzie and McCulloch both in the backfield right now for the Trojans on third down and five. Palmer, little short pass, pans out there all by himself. The Auburn defense broke down completely as McKenzie went out of the backfield. Nobody covered him, and he's still going all the way down to the Auburn 36-yard line. And again, it's confusion by the Auburn Tigers secondary. It's about three or four times tonight we've seen an SC wide receiver or tailback come out of the backfield and not be covered. The action goes away, but it's a straight drop back pass. Two Auburn defenders go with the wide receiver, and wide is the key word here because that is what McKenzie was as in open. 37 yards on the play. The Tigers have a new defensive coordinator, Gene Chizik. And, uh, you know, when you when you put in two new coordinators, you're putting in, in new vernacular, you're putting in terminology, you this and that, and changing things some, and yeah, it takes you a while to get used to it. It takes you a while to gel and put it all together. Yeah, and they're going up against a veteran team. You know, McKenzie, right. McCullough, and Palmer. Yep. And this is the second year of Norm Chow's offense. It ain't Molly Putz Tech, I'll tell you that. <laughs> Where is Molly Putz Tech? Oh, it's out there. Down the road, down yonder. It's up there near Ten Mile. Ten Mile, Oregon, huh? Yeah. Troy Polamalu's home town. Timeout. One of our officials got injured on the play. Therefore, we'll go with six man. Oh my goodness! I didn't see that. You know, I know those type of long runs, those pass plays. The referees are. Officials are running down the field as well. They sometimes get caught up in the wash. This is a good crew, too. This is a very good crew of officials, I think. 36-yard line, first down for USC. Palmer wanted to go quickly, couldn't do it. Man falls down for Auburn. Palmer throws the ball. It's intercepted. Oh, my goodness, Junior Rose Green. The intended receiver, Mike Williams, broke free when the defender absolutely fell down and there was nobody around him, and the ball sailed on Palmer, and it was picked off. It actually went right to Rose Green. What Palmer didn't do here, Keith, is read the coverage. That's right. Double coverage as Rose Green came over and got the pick. All he had to do was keep it down, and he's got a maybe six. But instead, he gets a turnover. Interception by Junior Rosegreen is set up by Carson Palmer not seeing the double coverage. There goes Carlos Rogers trying to hold Williams. And now, if Palmer throws that ball on the line, He's got a big play, but he thought saw the corner fall down. He thought he could loft the ball and get a touchdown, but Junior Rosegreen read his eyes, picked it off. And Auburn will start first down from their own nine-yard line, so both teams now have two turnovers. And Ronnie Brown is the running back for the Tigers. Tailback Brown has it, bounces outside. And gets it up to the 19-yard line where Deshaun Hill makes the tackle. Brown, a 217-pounder, making his second appearance of the ball game. We've not seen Chris Butler nor Trey Smith as yet. The other 
two running backs. And by bringing Obamano to the outside, watch how it affects the, the defenders on the weak side. They see the reverse coming, and now Ronnie Brown is right by Nazel with a big game. First down at the 19-yard line. Here's Brown again, just pounds in there. A little jawbone football. It was Walt Wolf, the official. Walt has pulled a muscle. And Walt is an umpire, so he's, he's umpire. he has the toughest job out there. Because he has to line up behind the defensive line and look for holding and all those intricate moves those offensive linemen and defensive guys go through. Now you've got a substitute going in there who's not used to playing in there. And I tell you, if you've never been there, <laughs> whoa. -ho. <laughs> There's only one place worse, and that's being a quarterback and being in the pocket. But look that's where he's lined up. He's not even used to. He should be up tighter. Jim Rennie is the is the man, the brave man who stepped into that position. Auburn again tries to stay inside with Ronnie Brown, and he isn't going to get a whole lot of real estate running in that territory. Earlier, we asked you the Aflac trivia question: Which of these two schools had the most recent All-American running back, and who was he? The answer is Auburn. It was Brett Fullwood in 1986. So I think perhaps that'll lend some definition to some of the travail that's existed at USC in trying to get a running game that is consistent and lasting. Out of the shotgun now. Cobb gets the heat. Cobb goes down at the 15-yard line as Melvin Simmons, outside linebacker, comes whistling in and makes the tackle. Simmons transferred to USC from Washington State. Set out a year, and here he is. And that's the first sack of the evening, number 51, coming from the weak side here. And again, uh, just nobody there to pick him up. That's a bust on that offensive line. And here comes Damon Duvall. They need a big one here to get him out of trouble. Waiting for it is Kareem Kelly. Kelly's got to look up right into the sun to field the punt. The beauty by boy, this can kick that football. Man. Kelly handles it all right and turns up field. Now he's got some room and guns out to the 40 yard line. He was tracked down by uh, number six for Auburn, uh, Horace Willis. Otherwise, he might still be running. 62 yard punt, a 17 yard return. And USC has the ball. You're watching ABC Sports Championship Television. Well, Pete Carroll looks pretty calm uh, right now, but he was a little hot a few seconds ago because the Southern California Trojans have been hit with a penalty flag for having 12 men on the field when Auburn punted. So as a result of 12 men on the field, that's a 15-yard penalty. The Auburn Tigers will get a first down out of the call and will own the football up at the 30-yard line. So instead of USC having the ball at their own 40 with 4 minutes and 14 seconds to play, it's Auburn, and here are the pilots of the planes that flew over before the game. That's Mark Preston. He was a punter on the Trojan football team in the late 80s. Now he's flying the rocket, that F-18. Those are the guys. Uh, Todd Harris is going to try to talk to him if we have some time. Saturday, the Southeastern Conference and Big 12 Powers will bang heads in Norman, Oklahoma. It is Alabama and Oklahoma at 3.30 Eastern, 12.30 Pacific here on ABC Sports, the class of college football. Boy, those, those two guys haul a wagon full of history, don't they? Oklahoma and Alabama. I'd just like to hear you say both those schools' names. <laughs> Williams is back into the lineup now as Auburn gets a big break. And here comes Williams turning up field and goes to the 40. And he's on the first down marker as Polawalu makes the tackle. I think uh, SC is going to get a steady diet of number 24, although that tackle really shook up Williams. And now he's got a bad ankle. Polamalu 43 is going to come over and slam him down after he gets off the block of Johnson here. But check out the ankle. It's pinned down underneath him. Ronnie Brown comes onto the field to replace him as uh, Williams is brought off the field so the trainers can have a look at him. He's sitting down 
And they're starting to work on him. Ball is pitched to Brown. Brown runs into one of his own men and finds a little bit of daylight and picks up about three yards on the sidelines. Brown looks uh, like a clone of Carnell Williams. Did not choose to go out of bounds on that play, but lowered his shoulder and got extra yards straight ahead. The trainers and the medical folks are having a look at uh, Carnell Williams. He's standing up now in front of the fan and uh, getting a good drink of water. It's a kind of a day where you can get dehydrated. Here's, you see what happened. His ankle gets caught. Caught by Deshaun Hill. Weak safety coming over. Second down and seven for Auburn in white. This is Brown. Brown bounces outside, goes back inside. And he's got a first down. Well, he looks so much like Williams with the sharp cuts, the slashing type of run, and also always heading down the field when he gets tackled. Good one-two punch for the Tigers. They said they want, they thought they could get 170. Eddie Grant, who is the running back coach for Auburn, thought the 200 was a reasonable goal for tonight's game. Go, go! Well, uh, the, the, I don't know now. <laughs> we have seen things evolve. It's a first down for the Tigers at the Trojan 46. Cobb looking around, has time, throws, ball is caught. And good to the 40-yard line for Silas Daniel, number 85. Here's Todd Harris. All right, Keith, well, the Cadillac was a little low on gas. He's got right now some bad cramps, so they're trying to get some sugar and some fluids into him. They're going to hold him out for a little longer, but he's almost ready to go. Keith? Thank you, sir. You know, Keith, Colonel Williams did not scrimmage very much, if at all, for Auburn throughout the summer two-a-days. There's nothing quite like game action, and I think these cramps are a result of this being his first action. It's second down and four. This is Brown bouncing around. They take him down right off the 40-yard line. And give him a little bit inside. Polamalu again, along with Mike Patterson. Patterson's a sophomore, 285-pound lineman out of Los Alamitos, California. Arnell Williams is back. See that Auburn has two timeouts. Remember, they tried, they had to burn one in the first quarter when they tried to draw SC off sides. 2.15 to go in the first half. 14 to 7, Trojans lead. This is Williams. I want to tell you, there's a couple of tough pigeons down there. I mean, they were right in the middle of the line of scrimmage and just toughed it out. I'm not telescoping no pigeons. <laughs> <laughs> Coming up on the Valvoline Halftime Show, a look at the great tradition of the Alabama and Oklahoma football programs. We have an NFL conversation for you. Are you ready for some football? And our first half highlights. From the 33, first down for the Tigers. Minute 39 to go. Quick pass to the outside. 29-yard line caught by Willis. And he's wrestled down in a hurry by Daryl Rideau. Rideau's only 5'8". And Daniel's six-footer, but Darrell got the job done. And as you, as field starts to shrink, you start thinking about putting the ball up in the end zone and get, letting these tall Auburn wide receivers out jump these shorter USC corners. Especially that big old Anthony Mix at 6'5", 234. Who happens to have a 42-inch or three-and-a-half-foot vertical jump. Whoa. Second down and five. Going to run it. Williams looking for daylight. Look at that. Two people missed the tackle. They had him right in their sights and they don't get him. Now you get a penalty flag. ABC's College Football Holiday Weekend Bash presented by AT&T Wireless. Welcome to M Life, AT&T Wireless. And in part by Pacific Life. Annuities, insurance, and investments rely on the strength of Pacific Life. Radio Shack, you've got questions, we've got answers. And Ford, no boundaries. Personal foul, USC. First down, Auburn, and the Tigers are knocking on the door with 50 seconds to go in the first half. 
Not a bad first half for Carnell Williams. Over 100 yards or close to 100 yards rushing. Battling the cramps on the sidelines, though. He's out of there now. And Brown is back. Brown sets up deep at a single back with three wide outs. Now on the center, big old 55, they pitch the ball back to Brown, got a hole right side, inside the five and hammered down to the two-yard line. Deshaun Hill and Melvin Simmons made the tackle, but Brown made them pay for it. The one advantage that Auburn has over SC is size. That offensive line is huge, and they're mobile. They get out in front, they know they're going to get great effort from their tailbacks. Look at that shot that Brown puts on the secondary of SC. Well, to give you an idea of the size, uh, Crittenden, the right tackle, is 338. Hockett, 290 at guard. Nolan, 294 center. 294 Lindsay at guard. And Mark Parra, the other tackle, is 309. When you talk to Williams as to uh, which side he likes to run, he says both his tackles are outstanding, Parra and Crittenden. They also have mobility in their guards. Seen Hockett get out in front. It's first and goal, Auburn. First and goal for the Tigers at the Trojan two-yard line. Revolutionary new drama coming to ABC. If you can solve this mystery, you can win over a million dollars. Push Nevada. A special preview Tuesday, September 17th at 9, 8 central on ABC. Timeout called by Auburn. The ball is right on the two. Tigers have one timeout remaining, and we have 23 seconds remaining to play in the first half. Tigers trying to tie it up in a 14-7 ball game with the Trojans leading. Auburn, I told you early on, uh, plays uh, five games of the month of September. They go home for uh, Western Carolina and Bandy, and then they go down to Starkville, and uh, Jackie Sherrill's probably going to be grumpy after getting beat by uh, Dan Fouts' alma mater on Saturday. Already gone now. Yeah, that's uh, four games in 18 days for a lot, the Auburn Tigers. That's a tough scheduling. They couldn't resist, though, coming to L.A., could they? No, no, no. Well, I can understand it. The kids like it. They're having fun. First and goal for the Tigers. Brown. Boom. Wall. Nothing. Timeout. Auburn's last. Yeah, that's, that's the clock. 19 seconds. That's a tough thing about that type of play. You, if you don't make it, you got to use your last timeout. So now it almost limits you to throwing the ball in some type of fashion for your next couple of plays. They have no ability to stop the clock. Remember, they burned a timeout in the first quarter. Trying to draw FC, SC offsides. Mike Pollard filled that hole. Boy, there was nothing doing. That big old 220-pound senior out of Long Beach just blocked the door. Well, you got 19 seconds, Dan. You can get, when you, you know, two plays out of it, maybe even three if you're really quick. I like your idea of throwing the ball up for Anthony Mix, a six-foot-five freshman. Well, you know, that's, let's play catch. Let's play jump ball. And you got a guy that size. Yeah, they got to put him in the game first. Though. Well, that's right. He's not in there. They got the big uglies in there, the tight ends. Yep. Wallace and Johnson. Of course, they like Johnson. They like Johnson very much as a receiver. And he's got some size, too. He's 6'6". Six, six. Yeah, we've already seen the type of athlete. Remember how he leaped over <laughs> Troy Palomalo in a big play earlier. Yeah, there he is, 87. Two men in the backfield this time, and Cobb keeps it. And going for the goal line. Fumble! They're calling touchdown. Linesman is standing there. Ronnie Brown, the ball came flying out. I think Brown might have been following the play and caught the ball on the ricochet. It is touchdown. Keith, I know you've done a lot of ball games, but I bet you haven't seen a touchdown like that one. I wasn't sure. I saw his hands go up, but I was going to wait until the referee capitalized it, and finally he did. Watch that ball come flying out now as a cop goes in there. And here's Brown right behind him, and Ronnie grabs it, 
and muscles his way just far enough to get the touchdown. 11 seconds to go in the first half. Deshaun Hill knocks it out, but does he get in? Well, the official right on the line there said the ball broke the plane for the score. Here's the point, and the point by Duval is good, and we're going to go to the clubhouse, it looks like, all even. They go 91 yards on 15 plays using 6 minutes and 43 seconds, but remember it was a... 12 man on the field penalty that gave Auburn the first down out of the 30 yard line that gave him life on that possession. And then a couple of personal foul couple penalties personal against fouls. SC yep. aided the drive. Let's check it out, Keith, see if he got in. Great shot there by Hill, knocking the ball loose. Heads up by Ronnie Brown, picking it up out of the air. But all he has to do is get the ball over, and Robert Johnson may get a huge assist for pulling him over across yeah, the goal got, line. The ball went over. I'll give it, I think it went over, the ball did. But it wouldn't have if Robert Johnson no, hadn't grabbed right. him and pulled him in. That's right. Told you he'd be a factor in that play, didn't you say that? <laughs> he was the primary receiver on that bootleg. Looked like it. So Brown owes Johnson supper. No kidding. <laughs> So Auburn exercising opportunity. The Trojans getting careless and making mistakes. And the Tigers count it. And it's 14-14. Duvall will kick off. There's a little bit of help from the breeze uh, going that direction. Trojans have two receivers back at the, uh, the goal line waiting. And it's very high and hanging short and going out of bounds. So no time elapses and the ball will come out to the 35-yard line where Southern California will possess it first down with 11 ticks remaining on the clock in the first half. Wow, that's a terrible kick by Duval because that gives SC a chance to throw the ball deep down the field. If they get a completion, they've got a timeout. They could perhaps get their fine place kicker. David Davis in range. That is not really a nail that you see Tommy chewing on there. <laughs> but he might feel like it. I like him. Well, if I was SC, I'd give it one shot. You got a timeout. Oh, of course you gotta go, you gotta, you gotta take a shot. They can take a knee and they can run out your clock. So four turnovers in the game are converted into touchdowns, and we are at halftime in a 14-14 tie. That ends the first half of play. The score, Trojans, 13. Tiger. Walt Wolf, the umpire, pulled a muscle and had to uh, go out of the game. Don't know if he'll be able to come back or not. And here's Todd now with Coach Tommy Tuberville. All right, Coach, I know it's early in the season, but those turnovers have got to be driving you crazy. Well, you know, we just, we, we can't get anything going with throwing the ball, so we've got to run it. But uh, Cornell's doing a good job. Offensive line's doing a good job. Defensively, we've just got to be able to adjust to their sets. We've turned some guys loose. They, they run a lot of different sets on us, so we're going to have to do a good job coaching at halftime. Good luck in the second half. Thank you. So it's 14-14 at halftime. We'll be back in a moment with the Valvoline Halftime Show. Welcome back to the Valvoline Halftime Show. 14-14 tie between the Auburn Tigers and Southern California Trojans. Here's Dan Fouch now with the highlights of that first half. Keith, it was turnovers and touchdowns in the first quarter. Daniel Cobb is going to run and then get hit by middle linebacker Mike Pollard, who also recovered the fumble. That led to this 14-yard touchdown reception by Kareem Kelly. Great interception here by Carlos Dansby. Very next play, Carnell Williams goes 23 yards for the score. That made it 7-7. Now in the second quarter, Cobb is going to be picked off by a defensive end, Omar Nazel. And Sultan McCullough will pay it off with that three-yard run, 14-7 SC. And then this interception by Junior Rosegreen led to this wacky touchdown by Ronnie Brown with an assist to Robert Johnson. Take away the mistakes, nobody scores, I guess, huh? Well, you know, if the both teams are playing fairly well for a first game of the year. But if you look at the rushing yardage for Auburn, that really tells the story. The second half, if Carnell Williams can get over his cramp problems, they could be tough. Okay. 14-14 tie at halftime. Now, 
As we began our telecast tonight, you saw the flyover of the U.S. Navy warriors from the Lemoore Navy Station here in California. They are out of the VFA-94 Fighter Squadron, commanded by Commander Brian Reeves. And we noted that two of the four pilots had direct ties in this game. Lieutenant Mark Preston, we saw a Trojan hunter in the late 80s, and Lieutenant Dan Height, a 93 Auburn graduate. You've got to be lucky to get a ride in one of these, perhaps a little foolish or a whole lot brave. I think Todd Harris has some of both. He's in the back seat here with uh, Dan Height, Lieutenant Dan Height, who is the 1993 Auburn graduate. And Todd came back, I should tell you, with his bag clean. And now here's Todd with the pilots from Lemoore. All right, thank you, Keith. The best pilots in the world, bar none, from the Navy. Mark Stoner Preston here. You led the pack over here, and i got to ask you, what is more daunting, kicking out of your own end zone here at the Coliseum or uh, flying that formation? Well, kicking and flying over the Coliseum are pretty similar in one sense. Everybody's looking. you got one shot to do it right. If you don't do it right, you're the goat. If you do it right, you're the hero. So they're pretty, pretty similar in that sense. Oh, uh, you look great. And the man who gave me the greatest ride of my life, Lieutenant Dan Niles Height, uh, I tell you, you're in enemy territory here as an Auburn Tiger. You've been around the world. What's more dying, the Coliseum or Afghanistan? Yeah, it's pretty tough. The uh, SC fans are not kind, but we got a lot of Auburn fans with us, and uh, the Auburn family is, is doing well. We're tied up, and we're looking for a good second half. All right, thank you, Lieutenant, and appreciate the ride. Keith, back up to you. Other pilots in the flight. Okay, thank you. That was awesome, Mark. Appreciate it. You guys are great. Oh, we'll play, 14, 14, 14 tie between Auburn and USC. This has been the Valvoline Halftime Show, brought to you by Valvoline's Max Life, the first motor oil formulated for higher mileage engines. We'll be back with the second half after this message and a word from our ABC stations. You're watching ABC's College Football Holiday Weekend Bash, presented by AT&T Wireless. This may be bad news for the Auburn football team and their faithful. Carnell Williams coming out of the locker room at halftime, back to, toward the field, walking with some pain, obviously having trouble with cramps. And if he can't go... That's a huge loss for this football team because he picked up 97 yards on the ground in the first half of play. So he's having trouble with cramps. And you saw most of those yards came after contact. Shows you the style that Carnell Williams employs, but that is a huge loss if he can't go. Ronnie Brown did have a good first half. The Auburn Tigers kick it off. And it's way back into the end zone by Damon Duvall, and it'll come out to the 20-yard line where it'll be a first down. Now, here's Todd Harris's report regarding Carnell Williams. Well, Keith, I'll tell you what, all the Auburn faithful are watching the sideline right now because their man, number 24, is down on the ground. What they're saying is he's having problems with cramps in his legs. They aren't being specific, but they are spending this lot of time on his hamstrings. He's taking in fluids, but all they can do right now is just stretch him until his turn comes, and they say he's going to go back out on the field. Keith? All right, thank you. Southern California will come out here with Carson Palmer at quarterback. They'll have uh, Sultan McCullough in the backfield with him, and Sonny Bird is in there as the fullback. And Palmer gives to McCullough. And McCullough pops it over the right side with a half a stride from making it big time, but uh, he's dragged down from behind. Sonny Bird in there as the blocking back and did a good job for them. You heard Pete Carroll say a little while ago, as they came out from the locker room, that he wanted to run the ball more in the second half. Here are the first half stats. Now they're being embarrassed on the ground, averaging just two and a half yards per carry. That's a perfect way for SC to start this second half. They've also, both teams have to eliminate these turnovers. McCullough picked up eight yards on that first carry of the second half. He's got it again, cuts back inside. Tigers jump him, and he's going to lose a yard or so on that carry. That Auburn had great penetration on defense, and Spencer Johnson got there early with Dansby. Just starting the second half, 14-14 tie between Auburn and USC. And SC just one of five converting third downs in the first half. It is third and three. Oh, 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 
Palmer throws, pass caught. Good for the first down to Kareem Kelly, number two. He's out to the 35-yard line, and move your chains. SC may want to establish the running game and, and make the offense work through the running attack, but if they're going to beat Auburn today, tonight, rather, it's going to be with this type of play. Short, controlled passing game to Kareem Kelly. Heads-up move there, well-designed play to get the first down with the catch, and Palmer, with the time to throw, put it right on the money. See, they've only picked up 40 yards and 15 carries, as Dan had noted. Not effective. Right it into the middle, and there's nothing there. He goes right down on the line of scrimmage. DeMarco McNeil on uh, Sultan McCullough. DeMarco McNeil with a stop. A lot of the attention goes to these great linebackers, Brown, Thomas, and Dansby, but DeMarco McNeil, he allows them to run free. That time he got a freebie of his own getting penetration and stopping McCullough. Second down and nine as they give McCullough a yard. That's Colbert in motion. Palmer still got it. Has some time to throw it. Ball ricochets off the intended receiver as Greg Gunther was defended tightly and it is an incomplete forward pass. That ball careened all the way back almost to the quarterback Palmer. Talked about hitting the uh, receiver in the face mask. I think this one hit him in the helmet, Keith. Fine throw by Palmer. Finds his tight end. Yep. Right through the hands. Right off the noggin. Yep. Gunther is a sophomore out of Calabasas. Third down and nine. Throws to the sidelines. They'll give him the 45, and that'll be enough for a first down. He was getting close to the line of scrimmage. It was Mike Williams, the big freshman receiver, that was walking the chalk and made the catch. He wears number one, but he really should be wearing like 89 or something because he is 6'5", 210 pounds, keeps his balance there, and now knows where the marker is, makes the catch, checks out his feet, picks up the first down. Good play for a freshman. So the Trojans keep the ball, make it a first down at the 45. McCullough, the deep man in the backfield, Auburn is offside. They got a free play here. McCullough running to the right side, picks up about three yards. Dansby got caught in the neutral zone. Boy, he's 6'5", 224 pounds. And anxious. Whoa. And four, what was it, 4'4", four, 40? Four, I can't believe these numbers that they... Given oh. to some of these linebackers. Let's listen to the snap count, see if Palmer pulled him off. Hard count, hard count. Yeah, and a little head bob looking yep. right at Dansby. Good play by Carson Palmer. Got away with it. Sometimes they'll flag you for that. First down and five now after the offside penalty. Palmer deep drop. Throws short, just beyond the marker. Ball caught by Sonny Bird, the fullback. And that's another first down for the Trojans at the Auburn 44. The crowd favorite, Sonny Bird, gets involved. Till back by necessity last year when the injury bug hit the Trojan backfield. The crowd gave him a nice little applause there. Well, actually, actually, tonight you have what was when they started fall practice the starting backfield in civilian clothes. Justin Farkas, the tailback, and Chad Pearson, the fullback. They're not even dressed. Palmer. Whoa, what a play that is by Dansby. Dansby was coming, quarterback Cotton. There was nobody to keep him from his quarry, and he just upended Carson right at midfield. Norm Chow calling the next play. But this one you got to give to Gene Chizik, number 11, coming on to blitz. Green Kelly turns him loose on the route. What an athletic tackle. Picking up Carson Palmer, who's no little guy. 230 pounds and down.
11.07 to go in the third quarter. The Trojans have the football at midfield. It is second down and 17. Farmer gives it to Malifo McKenzie. McKenzie with a big run, almost gets a first down. He gets about 16 yards on that carry. McKenzie's a big guy. He's 225 pounds and healthy for really the first time since he came to USC. Seems like SC is having more success when they go straight at Auburn. Yeah, right off the left side here of the screen, right side of the offensive line. That's a huge hole in the quickness of McKenzie to get through it. You're not going to run sideways against Auburn and go anywhere. This is McKenzie banging over the left side and getting the first down. As the Trojan offensive front has uh, played pretty well tonight, I think they've done all right. At the conclusion of today's game, we'll select the Chevrolet player of the game from each team. Chevrolet making a $1,000 contribution to each university's general scholarship fund. The ball rests at the 33 of Auburn, a 14-14 tie, 10-20 to go in the third quarter. And the sun's about gone into the Pacific. Palmer throwing. Pass is complete. Thrown hard to Kerry Colbert. Colbert will go down to the 20-yard line for another USC first down. And again, it's a short, controlled passing game. They used that bunch formation that time. And Palmer reading Colbert getting open in the middle. And these receivers are so... Both he and Kelly are so good at just setting down and giving their quarterback a stationary target. Puts, he can put the ball right between the numbers. Darrell Poston is in there at uh, tailback. Got fresh legs, but he can't get to the corner. And they track him down. A junior out of Huntington Beach. And he didn't have the quickness, and Auburn had figured that play pretty quickly. They came right to it. You know, Keith, we've been talking about the cramp problems that Carnell Williams has experienced. Well, Roderick Hood is in the locker room, we're told, also having trouble with cramps. I'm a little surprised, you know, because Auburn, it's hot in Auburn. Yes, it is. <laughs> and humid. Uh, Rashad Walker is uh, in there at a corner spot replacing uh, Hood. And there's Carnell Williams still walking around. He's up and moving about now. He's going to try to play. Carson Palmer. Penalty flag is down. Ball is caught by Brandon Hancock, the fullback. And Hancock's down inside the 15, but let's see about your penalty flag. Thrown by our substitute umpire. And this is what it usually is. Holding against the offense. So that'll back him up. 10 yards. The Drew Carey Show and Whose Line Is It Anyway will make an early premiere next Monday. Along with the regular season premiere of Monday Night Football. That's Drew at Whose Line starting next Monday on ABC. Is Walt back out there? He's, so we go. He's an old, tough old warrior. Yeah, you knew that he would be out there and making sure everybody knows he's out there throwing the flag. <laughs> yeah, he's got a little hitch in his get along. To make it second down and 22 now after the holding call against the Trojans. And Palmer back, throws this one to McCullough. Got a little bit of room. First man missed him. And he's down to about the 22. So he's short of his first down. He's got to go way down there to the 10-yard line to get that. Really a good uh, call by Norm Chow. Auburn playing a zone defense. Watch the screen come out to this side as uh, Palmer fades the pass and draws the defense to him. And now the convoy out in front. McCullough makes... Rodgers miss, and that's a good gain after that penalty. So it is third down and 12 now. Pressure coming. Palmer running down 
to the 20. That's the original line of scrimmage. It'll be fourth down and 10. Here comes the kicking team. And that was a great call by Gene Chizik. A zone blitz that time. You talked about the pressure, but the man who was spying on the quarterback was defensive tackle Wayne Dickens, number 96. He just dropped back there, looked for Palmer to run, and stopped him cold. Good chess match between these coordinators tonight. David Davis. 160-pound senior out of Hawthorne, California. He's 15 of 18 in field goals in his career. His longest 47. This is 37. He banged it. And he got it. And the Trojans go back to the lead by a score of 17 to 14 at 7.05 to play in the third quarter. You're watching ABC Sports Championship Television. Trojan band whooping it up. Their team leading 17 to 14. And here is uh, Ryan Killeen kicking off for USC. Trey Smith, he is the single man deep in the end zone. He's coming. First time he's had his hand on the football tonight. And here he comes pounding out to the 20-yard line. ABC Sports presentation of college football brought to you by Chevy Trucks, the most dependable, longest-lasting trucks on the road. Just for Men Gel, specially formulated for mustache, beards, and sideburns, the Rejuvenator. Verizon Wireless, we never stop working for you. And Olive Garden, where great Italian food tells you when you hear your family. What was that thing for beards and mustaches? I could use some of that. <laughs> Carnell Williams is back in the backfield, but Daniel Cobb puts it down, throws it upfield to the sidelines, and the pass is incomplete. That was a great incomplete pass, too. Staring down the rush of SC, just flipping its sidearm and avoiding a loss that would have pinned the Tigers back inside their 10-yard line. Obamanu was the intended receiver. You got to know when to throw the ball away, and he does such a good job, he almost gets a completion out of it. In fact, Obamano came real close to picking that one up. Yep. Second down, 10. This is William. Slides down behind the line of scrimmage. That's the second time now he's slipped. Yeah, here's our Pacific Life game summary. Tale of turnovers in that first half. Linebacker Mike Pollard forcing the fumble from Daniel Cobb and then getting the recovery. And an outstanding interception by Carlos Danby, linebacker for Auburn. Omar Nazel drops off from his defensive end spot, picks off Cobb there. And then Junior Rosegreen will pick off Palmer for the second interception. And then a turnover that wasn't a turnover, but was a touchdown. Ronnie Brown. Out of the shotgun for Auburn on third down and long. Trouble for Cobb. He shakes away from one, throws up the middle, and boy, that was almost picked off. That one was almost stolen by Deshaun Hill, but it's incomplete. It brings up fourth down, and the Tigers will punt. A lot better defensive series for the Trojans. Pressure on the quarterback, two plays in a row. Fine job of pressuring by Kenichi Odeze. And then an almost interception by Sean Hill as he dives forward, but can't pick it off. Now here's Damon Duvall. He had a 69-yarder and a 39-yarder. When he gets all of it, it's something to watch. And he got most of this one. It's fielded, and Kareem Kelly bounces off the tacklers. He's looking for help. There's a block in the back. They get away with it. No, they don't either. There's the penalty flag. Very clearly a block in the back by Deshaun Hill. And uh, the man on this side saw it and threw the flag. The official on the other side was backpedaling, trying to get out of harm's way. Good teamwork by our crew of officials from the Pac-10. So another mistake. They're going to give up some precious real estate for that. Pete's saying, why didn't the official on this side of the field call it? That's because he was running for his life. It was a good call, Pete. Don't worry about it. It was a good call, and you'll see it when you look at it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 
Here's Deshaun Hill, number five, right here. Used to call that clipping. It was 15 yards then. And it's an illegal block in the back. It's still 15 yards. I, I, I think Pete wanted a, a foul uh, on the Auburn side because he felt they tackled his man out of bounds. But well, they didn't do it. This is ABC's College Football Holiday Weekend Bash presented by AT&T Wireless. Carson Palmer's putting up some good numbers tonight, completing 68% of his passes, but the disturbing number is that number two there because of the pressure from Auburn. They start this possession 16-yard line, run it up inside, and we'll get a couple of yards on it with Brandon Hancock, a freshman. He's a pretty good-sized fellow, 235 pounds. But he, you know, when, you're, when you're young, it's hard when you're trying to make the transition into a Division I college football because the, the jump is so big. The game is so fast compared to what you've been used to. It's no question about league. that. Yep. Just like going from college to pro. There's some hole on the left side for Malifo McKenzie. Pretty good blocking on the left side. Gave him uh, a good two-yard hole as he pranced through there and picked up. Puts the ball out at the 22-yard line. So they're going to be looking at third down at about four seen a number of substitutions on that Auburn defense and Terrius Williams 31 is in there it's Mayo Sowell another linebacker in there and brought, replacing Roderick Hood is Rashad Walker at corner they brought 75 players and Tommy thought uh, a lot of them would play back goes Palmer they've been successful with the short passing game he throws that one beyond the reach however of Alex Holmes the tight end Holmes was available he just didn't hit him now he looked like he had a case of happy feet there. He had time to throw. And again, it's one of those bunch routes that we've been talking about. Here's the big guy right in the middle. Going to come right down over the middle. But watch Palmer as he drops back. Misses a wide open receiver. Here's the punt by Tom Malone. Good one. Fielded by Marcel Willis. And Willis, good return, comes out around the 47-yard line with 4.20 to go in the third quarter. 49-yard punt, 18-yard return. Trojans leading by 3, 17 14. Injury report, Todd Harris. Well, Keith, Auburn is the only team that's suffering from injuries. Right now, they're saying that Ronald Nunn, he, he went into the locker room, and I asked what the situation is. He said, nothing serious. He'll be back, but he hasn't come back in the last two series. And Melvin Simmons, 51, the linebacker, they're saying he's suffering from a case of bell ringing itis. He should be back maybe in a series or two. Keith? Justin Wyatt, then a freshman, has to go in and play. And Bobby Otani, another freshman, is in there. So the... The young'uns are getting to play some tonight, and here's a re very good defensive surge by Southern California to bury the Auburn uh, runner well short of the line of scrimmage. Kenichi Udezi led the attack, and Carnell Williams just simply had no place to go. He has carried the ball twice here in the second half, and he's lost six yards because of this penetration. Odezi, 94, fights off the block of Crittenden. Quickness that time beat power and heft. So the loss is four yards. It'll be second down and 14. Daniel Cobb caught and sacked. And a penalty flag face mask. Nazel leaped over a blocker and in the process of reaching for the quarterback caught the face mask on the way down. And will pay for it. He might caught a little skin too. Yep, might have. I imagine that'll be a big one, won't it? Yeah, I think so, and it's it's almost an inadvertent one, though. You know, he's it is, jumping yeah. over Personal the blocker. Foul, grabbing the face mask on the defense, 15 yards yep. to the previous spot, Thank automatic you. first down. Normally, when you take that hat off like that, and you can see uh, he's bleeding a little bit, he got scratched. Carnell Williams with the block. Yeah. That's better be 15. 
Yeah. If he just takes his hand off the face mask right away, he doesn't get the flag, perhaps, or perhaps it's only a five-yarder. But he ensured the tackle. He took Cobb all the way to the ground. So the ball will come all the way down to the Southern California 42-yard line after that 15-yard penalty. SC had the second fewest penalties in the Pac-10 last year. This is not going to make Pete Carroll happy. They're going to take time here for uh, Daniel Cobb to come to the sidelines and get a Band-Aid. But see, there's the scratch right under the eye as, uh, as uh, Daisy reached inside the face mask. Oh, he's real close to poking his eye out. Yeah. Jason Campbell then will be sent in to quarterback. Yeah, they used to time out though, Keith. I think they, that uh, Cobb will be able to go back in if they can get the bleeding stop. They're trying to. Campbell is uh, number 17. He was a starting quarterback through the last half of the season last year. 6'4", 220 pound sophomore out of Taylorsville, Mississippi. And uh, he will have to go in as soon as this timeout expires. And, and it looks like he's going to unless they can uh, repair Daniel Cobb. It's not a, a big deal. It's just a, a, a finger scratch on the face of the Auburn quarterback. Next Saturday, it'll be Alabama, Oklahoma at 3.30 Eastern, 12.30 Pacific here on ABC Sports. A class of college football. Oklahoma, Alabama. There have been some years, you know, when you'd have walked 40 miles to see Alabama and Oklahoma play. And just the mere fact that they're going together next Saturday is, is fun because having been around those two programs for so many years and so many memories, boy, oh, boy. And you know Alabama's going to be fired up. Uh, each time they play a team that's highly ranked, they consider it a bowl game. Of course, they will not be going to any bowl games for a while. No, they won't. Jason Campbell is in the game, uh, replacing Daniel Cobb. They finally got a Band-Aid on him, and I think they've got the problem solved. But here's Jason. Jason hands the ball away to Carnell Williams, and here's the surge up the middle behind the Auburn offensive front. And they get something out of that, moving from the uh, 42 down to about the 38. Great power on that run by Carnell Williams. This is what he did in the first half when he ripped off 97 yards. This 23-yard beauty came after the Dansby interception. But you can see how he's always thinking downfield. Never to the sidelines. Once he gets there, he's going to take on tacklers. Second down and six. High formation. A lot of formations tonight. Go back to uh, Parnell Williams. And uh, he's greeted uh, by number 99, Mike Patterson and Udezi. Numbers have been a little bit different here in the second half for Cadillac. This is why the penetration, SC is slanting and creating opportunities in the opponent's backfield with the quickness of Patterson and Odezi. Daniel Cobb is back at quarterback now, having been repaired. And pressure coming, passes away, drills it in there, complete. Good pass. Thrown with authority and right in between eight and nine on Big Anthony Mix. They finally get the ball to that big guy. And that's why you go back to your starting quarterback. He's a little bit fired up because he's got a Band-Aid on his eye, but he's also been in the flow of the game. Mix number 89 on the inside of the slant. That's a strike, a nice hard low pass by Cobb. And it's an easy catch for the freshman Anthony Mix. He puts his body on you. I mean, he's a shield, and it's hard to get to it without fouling him. On the 29-yard line, Cobb rolls out with it, keeps it. Going to take a lick or two as he gets down to about the 22-yard, 23-yard line. Omar Nazel again getting a piece of the action. Daniel Cobb may kick himself when he sees this one in the yep. tapes tomorrow because he had Anthony Mix on a deep post route against Daryl Rideau. Rideau is 5'8". And Anthony Mix 6'5". Just put it up. There's nobody else back there but those two. It's got to be six points. You throw it at him. Roma Shodu, he's the wide man. Great speed. They run the ball with Williams, and Williams trying for the first down is going to have it. He got just inside the 19-yard line, and that will be just enough, it appears. See where they put it. 
You got an Auburn man down on the field. That'll be Ben Nowell the center, number 55. And a good one. They'll miss him. He's a Remington watch candidate. And whenever you lose your center, you talk about a scary time because now you've got to think about the center exchange through the quarterback. Well, Jeremy Engel is listed as the backup center. But oftentimes, some of those guards and tackles have played, and particularly guards have played the center position before, so you never know. It is going to be a first down for Auburn when play resumes as they attend to uh, Ben Nolan. Big senior out of Ponte Vedra, Florida, and it's uh, Danny Lindsay, the left guard, who's going to move over to the center position, and that'll put Troy Reddick into the game at left guard. And Troy Reddick, a true freshman. So you got a sophomore moving in for his center. When Lindsay moves over to Nolan's spot, and now Reddick moves up, the true freshman under the bright lights of L.A. The sun's gone away now. It's been a very hot day, two days here. It's supposed to start cooling off tomorrow. But the Auburn Tigers are going to red-eye home. They'll go right from here to the airport, into the plane, lock the doors, and see you. And they may get out of that plane on the other end and go out to the practice field. They don't have a whole lot of time before their next ball game. <laughs> That's right. Well, they'll get home at a reasonable hour, won't they? Like, what, 2.30, 3 o'clock? <laughs> oh, my Lord. Let's see what Todd can tell us about the Auburn Center. Well, Keith, here's a kid who is helping cancer patients, believe it or not, with his hair. He grew his hair 10 inches over the course of a year and a half so he could cut it off and donate it to charity. And the charity is called Locks of Love. The charity is for cancer patients who have lost their hair through chemo, and they use it to make wigs. So here's a guy, really, you'd expect more from his size and brawn, but he's using his hair to help out some good people. I think he looks better. <laughs> I knew you would. But then I would, wouldn't I? <laughs> He had a couple of different colors of hair there, too, didn't he? <laughs> he can help out a whole bunch of folks. Well, he's hobbling a bit, so he's uh, done some damage to one of his extremities. And he's going to have to sit down for a time. And here we go. First down at the 19-yard line for Auburn. USC 19, 17-14. Trojans have the lead. Tigers are threatening. And Daniel Cobb rolls out, drops deep, throws the ball back the other way. Has a man. Oh, my word. Robert Johnson was all alone, looked away to see where everybody was and lost the football. Yeah. Catch the ball and then run. He knew he was wide open. He knew he was close to the end zone. Here he is right here. Watch the action go this way, and then it's the throwback. Great job of selling the block there. Watch him get up, and now he knows if he catches this ball, he may score if he catches the ball. Oh, dear. Second down and 10. Oh, nothing doing. Trojans eat up the tailback. Carnell Williams never had a chance. They've controlled him in the second half. Yeah, they're doing a good job of guessing when to slant. That time they slanted to the field, and that's exactly where Auburn wanted to run the ball. Both these coaches have a defensive history in, in their coaching careers, and we have come to the end of three. Auburn continues to threaten, but USC continues to lead. 17-14, back after this message and a word from our ABC station. As we come back to the final quarter here at the Coliseum on third down and 13, Auburn's pass is incomplete. Anthony Mix didn't hold it. The pass hit him right on the numbers. He was falling down. The ball was catchable, and he did not do it. That's the only place that Daniel Cobb could have thrown this ball because the safety was coming over, and the freshman has his feet slip out from underneath him and can't come up with a catch. This is a great throw by Cobb. He has to throw it hard and low. It's a slant route. There go the feet, and there goes the ball. It's a chance for a tie with Damon Duvall, a 39-yard field goal try, starting the fourth quarter. It's plenty of leg, and it's good. 
And so we're all even. We've got 14 minutes and 51 seconds to resolve this issue. Tough, tight football game. Seventeen tie in the fourth quarter. Damon Duvall will kick off. I'll plant this seed. Damon Duvall had three games winning field goals last year. He hammers it into the end zone. It's six yards deep, and Jason Mitchell is told to put your knee down, son. You're not going to run it out. ABC's College Football Holiday Weekend Bash presented by AT&T Wireless. AT&T, welcome to M Life. AT&T Wireless. And in part by Suzuki, maker of innovative motorcycles and all-terrain vehicles and proud sponsor of the Heisman Trophy Award. Valvoline's Max Life, the first motor oil formulated for higher mileage engines. And Dodge, you can take life as it comes, or you can grab life by the horns. Dodge. The flame is lit at the Los Angeles Coliseum as darkness settles in, and here are the Trojans first down from their own 20-yard line. And Carson Palmer, who's gone all the way at quarterback, on a rollout. Penalty flag is floating in the air behind him, thrown by the referee, and it probably is holding. The pass was completed to Kareem Kelly. Holding against the Trojans. Just another mistake as we take a look at our Pacific Life game summary. How about drop passes? This is Greg Gunther, wide open over the middle, as it flying off his face. And the Auburn tight end, Robert Johnson, drops a potential game breaker there as is Anthony Mix a couple of almost touchdowns for Auburn in that last drive but they did come away with the field goal to tie it up holding call against the Trojans moves the football back to the 10 yard line and that's where they'll start Seven penalties now for SC for 87 yards. That's tough to overcome. They haven't got enough feet for that to continue. Palmer hands it off inside traffic. Sultan McCullough finding daylight. Good run by McCullough. Gets it out to the 24-yard line and a first down. Uh, Rashad Walker took his feet away. Yeah, Walker makes a tackle that perhaps saves a touchdown because nobody's going to catch Sultan McCullough if he gets out into the clear here. A draw plays a perfect call. Good vision, power to break that tackle. Now this, watch this tackle by Walker as he barely brings down McCullough. McCullough's got to step through this tackle, though. This would, would not have brought down Carnell Williams. Ball is just short of the 25-yard line as they mark it. Auburn blitzing. They pick it up. Pass is thrown. Pass is caught by Kerry Colbert. And Colbert's out to about the 35. And that's another first down. So Southern California now puts some real estate at their back, and they've got room to move. And they overcame that holding penalty. Brought themselves... From inside their own 10-yard line, now out to the 35 in just two plays. McKenzie is the deep back for the Trojans. He gets the ball. He runs into a pile of humanity and picks up a couple of yards. Even with that fine run by Sultan McCullough, SC, 2.9, that's not going to get it done. But this number here has been a big improvement for SC's defense as they have uh, kept Carnell Williams in check. In fact, Williams in the second half, minus one yard. Of course, he is hurting. Troubled with cramps. Yep. Second down and eight. Palmer throws it underneath McKenzie coming out of the backfield. Malifo McKenzie down to the 33-yard line of Auburn. Dontarius Thomas, linebacker, ran him down. Yeah, Dontarius Thomas had McKenzie in man-to-man -man coverage and McKenzie on an option route with a great move. Here he comes out of the backfield. Here is Thomas. He's going to go out and in, and Thomas is going to slip and fall down. Watch the head fake. Great sharp route. 
and then down the field for Malifo McKenzie. That's why he's a starting tailback. Every down player can do it all. 32 yards on that play. He's in motion now. As McCullough comes in as the setback, McCullough gets the ball. And uh, nothing to do in that traffic. As Jay Ratliff. And here's a penalty flag. Two of them, as a matter of fact. Might have a little personal foul coming up here. That ball, personal foul on a defense. 15 yards from the end of the run. Automatic first down. Tommy's hot. He should be. That's a crucial penalty against Auburn. Mark Brown, the recipient of the tongue lashing. Puts the football inside the Auburn 19-yard line for a first down. McCullough deep. McKenzie, the up back. The H-back, if you want to call him that. Ball is thrown underneath, down the middle. Ball goes to Kareem Kelly. Kelly fumbles! Auburn looks like they may have it. A white shirt went for it. The fight is on underneath. We'll see who gets the call. I think Auburn might have that ball. <laughs> a hard time digging it out, I'll tell you that. It is Auburn ball. Junior Rosegreen with the big hit on Kareem Kelly. Pop that ball loose, and it's anybody's guess at the bottom of that pile, but it is a Tiger with it. There he comes, number 11. It's Carlos Dansby who comes out of there with the ball. Kelly on the crossing route, trying to make a big play here. As he cuts up the field, watch number four from the right side here. Again, he puts his shoulder and elbow right on the ball, and Dansby's at the bottom of the pile for the recovery. Big play, second big play of the night for Junior Rose Green. And the Trojans see a golden opportunity frittered away as Auburn takes over, first down at their own 12-yard line. Cobb turns and gives it to Brandon Johnson, the fullback. First time Johnson's carried the ball tonight. He spins for a couple. I won't give him two, I'll give him one. The so Rose Green gets an interception in the first half, forces a fumble here, Dansby gets an interception in the first half and recovers a fumble here. You know who feels what a whole lot better right now is uh, Mark Brown. Brown. <laughs> you bet he does. <laughs> Cobb's checking off. This is what he's looking at. Troy Palomalo at the line of scrimmage. Pitches it back. Williams behind the line of scrimmage. <laughs> Sean Cody made that tackle. Let's take a look at our Dodge defensive playbook. And what SC is trying to do with Polamalu is move him around in different positions. He's going to be used as a pass rusher throughout the season. And he's trying to create confusion in the pass blocking assignments of the offense. With his speed and determination, one false step by a pass blocker and a quarterback's in big trouble. But Auburn's done a good job tonight of not finding where's Waldo, but where's Polamalu. Matt Gutegood is uh, coming out of uh, the ball game. Gutegood, a sophomore out of Huntington Beach. And uh, it looked like Matt had his bell rung a little bit because his teammates were talking to him and the trainers came in a hurry. He never did sit down or anything. He just got to come out and rest a little bit. Dallas Sarts will come in and replace him. He is a freshman out of Granite Bay, California. It is third down and 10 for Auburn. Trojan defense trying to hold him. And Daniel Cobb back. Gets heat. Steps away. Got some daylight. And throws incomplete. 
And so the defense did its job. The defense actually has been doing its job the whole second half. There's no question about it. We talked about it. the troubles with, that Carnell Williams has had, but the passing game has faced a lot of pressure. Surprising mobility by Daniel Cobb here as he breaks away from Sean Cody and just can't get a good grip on that ball. But if he had thrown a good pass, it might have been picked off. So Duvall out of the end zone, hits it at the two-yard line. Pretty good kick. Kelly. He got that, almost got around the corner. It was almost a block in the back, but not quite on either case. But Southern California has very good field position after a 49-yard punt and a 10-yard return. Seventeen tie with ten minutes and five seconds to play in the ball game. The Southern California Trojans will own the football at midfield for this possession. Time permitting, stay tuned for the thrifty car rental post game report. And uh, here the Trojan, the Trojan defense did a heck of a job there in keeping Auburn pinned back after having fumbled it away. And they give it back to the offense. Great field position. Remember, David Davis is an outstanding place kicker for SC. He is. Won't take long to get him in range. McCullough is the deep back. He's got the ball going to the left side, and Auburn tracks him down in a hurry. And no gain. Attendance tonight, 63,269. Good crowd. Good crowd. A lot of Auburn Tiger fans here filling up the West End Zone. About 10,000, they said. And they're loud. I think they surprised some of these laid-back Southern California fans earlier in the game. Oh, they've got fervor. You go down to Auburn and watch a ball game in that big old 86,000-seat stadium. I'll tell you, ears will ring for a week. <laughs> Second down and 10. Pressure was on. Ball was away. Completed to McKenzie. Penalty flag came right in front of uh, McKenzie as Palmer delivered it quickly because there was an Auburn man right in his face. Carlos Dansby was right in his face, but was Dansby offsides? So they'll pick up five yards on that and make it uh, first down and five. You know, actually, Dan, I never did a ball game in the new, new Auburn Stadium. When they got all fancy and 86,000 seats, I was gone. That was history. It's not too late for you to go back. <laughs> That's, I'm not allowed anymore. That's we, we don't own that territory. Well, Carlos Danzu's had a great night. This is a mistake, though. Watch him try to beat the snap count. Must have lined up because he was stationary when the ball was snapped. He's got four tackles on the night, a sack, interception, fumble recovery. He's been all over the place. Second down and five. That's McCulloch. Ah, nothing doing. No, you're just not going to get it wide. No, nope. you cannot run wide on this defense. And you know, who's a very motivated player. We talked about Mark Brown. He and that other linebacker, Donatarius Thomas, right there, made sure that McCullough had to go out of bounds. Watch the speed of these linebackers. They just take off and fly. Carlos Rogers fighting off the chicken block. Kareem Kelly there. Third and six now for this play. Penalty flag. Pass caught. Pass is completed to Kerry Colbert all the way down to the 25-yard line, but look out for the flag. That's got holding all over. Or illegal motion. Oh, motion, yeah. yeah. Great pass and great catch. Too bad it's coming back. Arcamento, old eagle eye. Boy, he jumped on that, didn't he? <laughs> yeah, and I did too. <laughs> oh, <okay. laughs> After, I saw Mark's signal before. <laughs> Mark's signal. <laughs> <laughs> Think I'll wipe my glasses. Yeah. <laughs> Kelly Hayes back with us again this year. Most of our crew back. And it's a good bunch. And it's good for me to be back with this good bunch, too. Oh, yeah. We're happy to have you. 
Tim Brandt, who spent two years here while you were gone, yep. he's off uh, making his fortune in the ACC in the Big East. I heard he's making a fortune. <laughs> Third down 11. I'm pissed. Third down 11. Palmer throws. Ball is caught underneath by Kelly. Kelly needs some help. He's got it. And he's got the first down. Helmet flying around, but he holds on to the football as he gets inside the 35-yard line. So yeah. Kareem Kelly is making a statement tonight himself. You know that? He yeah. didn't have a very big year last year himself. Well, and remember he had that fumble the last time SC had the ball yep. deep in the red zone. This is a great effort because he's got a long way to go after he makes this catch to pick up the first down. And there's some head knocking going on, huh, Keith? Yep. Huge play by Kelly. Well, clearly both teams want this game. There is no question about it. It means a lot to them because it, it'll it actually probably move SC up a little bit in the minds of some if they can handle Auburn. And certainly the reverse might be for the Tigers. That carry is down to the 30-yard line for Sultan McCullough. McCullough's 190 pounds. McKenzie's 225. So they've both got pretty good size. And the other number four in today's game, Junior Rosegreen, is the guy that popped the helmet off of Kareem Kelly. He's only a sophomore. This is a young Auburn team. And uh, they're going to cause some trouble in the SEC. Caused some last year. Beat Florida. Second down. Call it seven. Palmer back. Gets rid of it. Throws it to Sonny Bird. And Sonny Bird turns around and bang. There's Rashad Walker. And they butted heads and down he went. But he secured the catch, he lowered his head, fell forward, picked up an SC first down. So they moved the change to the 22-yard line of Auburn at 6 minutes and 41 seconds to play in the ball game. A 17-17 time. Both teams will come out of here, win or lose, feeling they have been tested. Palmer hands it off to McCullough. McCullough dips in, tries to come back out, and can't do it. As uh, Thomas makes another tackle. Ontarius Thomas, who's on the watch list for both the Lombardi Award and the Butkus Award, showing us why. It's fun to see David Housel and Susan come by tonight for a little bit. Hadn't seen him in a while. He's the athletic director now, having come up through the ranks. He's always been an Auburn man. I used to enjoy watching old David sit down at that old typewriter, and great things came out of that old typewriter. He's really good. He's now the AD. Second down and 11, and Palmer throws underneath. It goes to McKenzie. McKenzie diving for the first down is going to come up just a little bit short, about a yard short. Mark Brown, reaching and getting just enough. Now this is going to bring up a real interesting third down and short for SC. Haven't had a whole lot of success on the ground. Palmer has settled in in the second half. Numbers are very solid, not throwing an interception. And they've had success with the intermediate routes, especially the bunch routes. Well, you get the feeling they're going to run it, don't you? Third and two. This formation gives you that feeling. They are. And Sultan McCullough dives. Twists. Now is hoping. Close enough for the change. So they'll bring them on. Pete Carroll's got to get out those old clips of Sam the Bam Cunningham going up over the top on third and short. Oh, he's short. First down. Oh, my goodness, that was close. Woo. Now SC can work on the clock. 4.42 to play in the game. Boy, that couldn't have been more than a nubbin. It was really close. 
McCullough's in the backfield with Sonny Bird. Colbert's in motion. McCullough's got the ball and finds a little daylight on the left side, running right in behind Sonny Bird. And he's going to have a pretty good pickup out of that. We've seen very little variety in the SC running attack, but that's by design. They want to run a few plays well instead of running a bunch of different things each week. Norm Chow knows that the strength of this team is in his tailbacks right now, and they are performing. Five yards on that play. Moves the ball down to the eight-yard line of Auburn. Second down and five. McCulloch again inside the five, close to the three. Just becomes a matter of will. You hear about who wants it more? Right now, that SC offensive line is controlling Auburn up front. That offensive line, Matua, is in the ballgame. Off and on all night, even hurt. There's Big Sam. Sam Bam, Cunningham. The man who integrated football in the state of Alabama as much as anybody. And after John McKay took the Trojans down there and beat Alabama like 42 to 28, uh, Bear took him into the locker room and said, boys, I just wanted you to meet a football player. <laughs> Sam Cunningham, delightful man. Ball is just short of the three-yard line, and there's timeout now called by Southern California. Two minutes and 53 seconds to play in the ball game. The Trojans have their fate right in front of them. EC. Third down and a long yard for the Southern California Trojans, uh, just short of the three-yard line. Auburn's three. They've been down here before, and they haven't done anything with it. This is a chance to win the ball game, perhaps right here. Give it to McCullough. He'll have the first down. They will have a first and goal about the two-yard line, maybe inside of it. Take a look at a couple of the key plays for senior wide receiver Kareem Kelly. A critical mistake here as he's forced to fumble by junior Rose Green. And then on third and 11, watch Kelly convert with his 18-yard reception and takes the big hit from Rose Green once again. Everybody on both sides of this big old stadium kind of holding their breath. First and goal, and the ball comes out. Penalty flag down. Fight going on for the football. <laughs> Trojans say they have it. I think Auburn might have been offsides. Palmer gets up with it. Here's the call. Auburn's offside. Well, they're anxious. They want to get there. That might have been what caused the fumble in the first place. Could have been. Defense, half the distance of goal from the previous spot. Still first down. Auburn has two timeouts remaining. They cannot afford to let much more time roll off this clock. Clock shows 2.23. McCullough, the deep man. Palmer gives it to him. Right side, stopped at the goal line. Solid, solid hit by Mark Brown. Middle linebacker. They got to use their timeouts, though. Clock shows two minutes. We go inside. Two minutes to play in the ball game now. Eventually, SC is going to score whether a touchdown or a field goal, you would think. What a great tackle by Brown and Junior Rosegreen once again playing his first game at safety. is a converted corner. Ball is on the one-yard line. McCulloch single back. Now here comes Bird across the block for him. And Palmer keeps it. And... I'm waiting for a man in a striped shirt to put up his hand. There it is. Touchdown, Trojan.
Wasn't easy, but they got it in. Yeah, it helps to be 6'6 and 230 pounds and just inches from the goal line. plays to go 50 yards and listen to this they used eight minutes and 39 seconds that's awesome Davis for the point it's good so at 126 to play in the ball game Southern California goes to the lead by 24 to 17 Carson Palmer walking around. He looks like he's <laughs> he's been to war. He's been used tonight, but he sticks it in the end zone to take the lead. Carnell Williams now is back on the field. Cramps and all. He's minus three in the second half. The cramps have just simply taken part the horsepower away from the Auburn offense in the second half. But he's back there at the goal line waiting for the kickoff. Now, will they kick it to him? I wouldn't. <laughs> This young man's had a good night kicking off. He's put a few deep in the end zone. Yeah, but he's Williams is back there now. Yeah. Killeen hits it, knocks it big and deep, and he kicked it away from him. He did not kick it to him. He kicked it into the far corner and gave him no chance to get his hands on the ball. That means Auburn has to start at the 20-yard line with a minute and 26 seconds to play in the game. And you look at the total offense in the fourth quarter here in that long drive, all those plays by SC. And you got to give a lot of credit to SC's defense shutting down this Auburn offense. They're going to be tested now, though. These are some talented, fast receivers for Cobb. Auburn has two times out remaining as Cobb is back to throw. Can't get it off. There's nobody to throw it to. But you got to throw it somewhere. Throw it deep. Throw it out of bounds. Throw it somewhere. Just don't get sacked. But he didn't lose more than a half a yard on the, the tackle. Yeah, that tackle forced him to use their timeout. second timeout here in the second half. This is not the strength of this offense. Ben Nowlin, incidentally, the Auburn center who had to leave the game earlier, is back at center. Cobb wearing the band-aid. That's a finger scratch from a face mask foul. A minute and 15 seconds uh, to play in the game as Auburn has the timeout to talk about it. Working to make us all winners on the road. Minute 15, second down, a little more than 10 for the Tigers. They've only gained 13 yards in the second half. Daniel Cobb lets it go to the sideline. Ball is caught by Marcel Willis. And Willis will have a first down as he gets it up near the 40. That's a perhaps the biggest play they've had in the whole second half. Has to be. And Willis showing good strength to pull away from the tackler. Justin Wyatt, the freshman. Ball is on the 38-yard line. First down for the Tigers. He got a minute eight. That play required seven seconds. Staying in the shotgun with three wide out. Real quick pass to the sidelines. Willis grabbed uh, right about the 40-yard line. That's a first down. Uh, that's uh, uh, Jason Leach making the tackle for Southern California on the first down pass. So pick up two yards. That high pass that really hurt uh, Marcel Willis, Keith. Yeah, they make no a chance, tough, did he? Yeah, he made a tough catch, and then he comes down, and Leach with real good reaction. Now you've got 57 seconds to play in the ball game. And remember next Monday night, Al Michaels, John Madden, the Super Bowl champs, the New England Patriots, against the Pittsburgh Steelers. That'll be at 9 Eastern, 6 Pacific on ABC's Monday Night Football. And except for the Denver Broncos, who repeated as Super Bowl champs, things haven't gone all that well for our Super Bowl champs lately. 
A lot of shuffling around. Of, uh, a lot of veterans were let go, weren't they? Yeah, th that's free agency. That's salary cap. Yep. That's the NFL. Yep. Second down and eight. Two factors in this second half. The Southern California defense really got up. And uh, Carnell Williams losing his ability to do much because of leg cramps. Really hurt him. And Southern California finally managed to punch it in to take a 24-17 lead. 57 seconds as we get ready to snap now. Second down and eight from the 40-yard line. Ball rolls back to Cobb. He's caught behind the line of scrimmage. The snap rolled on the ground, back to him, but it picked it up, and suddenly big old Mike Patterson had a hold of him, and down he went. And the clock will continue to roll. Auburn's out of timeout. That was a risky call by SC coming with the blitz, but it paid off. Inside 40, go down to 35 seconds. Cobb looking deep, throws down the middle with it. Ball is incomplete. Clock stops at 28 seconds, intended for Anthony Mix. Anthony Mix has got to get a new pair of shoes. That's twice now he should have made a catch. Earlier in the uh, quarter, he had a chance to make a catch at about the two-yard line. Similar type of route, similar type of result. His feet slip out from under him, and he can't make the catch. Fourth down with 28 seconds to play. It is fourth down and 14. This could be the ball game right here. Trojans ball back in cover. Cobb lets it go to the sidelines. Ball is caught. But the Trojans, having dropped their defense back, converge on the receiver, take him down, and take over the football with 17 seconds to play in the ball game. Real smart defensive football for Pete Carroll's SC Trojans here in the second half knowing when to bring the pressure and when to drop back into coverage. They rolled the dice each time and they came up winners. Southern California has a week off and then they go to Boulder to play the Colorado Buffalo. Watch how they all drop back into their zones. The only man open is Carnell Williams. And when he catches the ball, the Trojans are closing. Now all they have to do is start the clock and the game is over. Today's Chevrolet players of the game are Carlos Danby of Auburn. Five tackles, a sack, interception, and fumble recovery, and all a night of torment. Uh, Carson Palmer at quarterback for Southern California, 302 yards on 23 out of 32, and the game-winning touchdown scored by Palmer. Once again, your final score, Southern California 24, Auburn 17. ABC Sports is online at ESPN.com. Keyword, ABC Sports. Keith Jackson, Dan Fouts, and Todd Harris. Don't forget, on Saturday at 3.30 Eastern, 12.30 Pacific, we will have more college football action as Alabama travels to Oklahoma. Once again, your final from the Los Angeles Coliseum tonight, USC 24, Auburn 17.